<laughs> a man called Maria Edgar uh, wrote monologues for Stanley Holloway. I was going to say Stanley Unway, that would have been an interesting <laughs> monologue. Um, and he was a, he was a great, he was, he was Scott, he was, uh, and uh, he also wrote screenplays for Gainsborough Films. And uh, well, I... was a terrific, terrific character. Uh, but he, he seemed to get inside the vernacular, and uh, and so this is a this is a little poem, or it's not so little, uh, about uh, the Peninsula War uh, at uh, a point of where they're uh, defending a, uh, a place called Badajoz or Badajoz, um, and uh, it's again it's in the it's in the vernacular which you'll understand. And I'll tell you now, it's supposed to be funny, this. <laughs> Just in case it isn't. <laughs> and it's so close to Christmas, I thought it might be appropriate, because it's about uh, a Christmas pudding that Sam gets sent by his mum to the trenches uh, when they're working uh, with a British army. You're telling them the story. I'm not, I'm not, it's not in rhyme. Uh, so, see how you get on with it. It was Christmas Day in the trenches in Spain, in T Peninsula War, and Sam Small was cleaning his musket. It was a thing that he'd never done before. You see, they'd had him inspected that morning and Sam had got into disgrace. But when Sergeant had looped down the barrel, a sparrow flew out in his face. <laughs> The sergeant reported the matter to Lieutenant Bird. Coincidence. Lieutenant Bird, then and there, said Lieutenant, how oh, very disgusting. The Duke must be told of this here. The Duke were upset when he heard. He said, I'm astonished I am. I must make a most drastic example. There'll be no Christmas pudding for Sam. <laughs> shame, they all cried, shame. Well, <laughs> When Sam were informed of the sentence, surprise rooted him to the spot. It was far worse than he had expected. He thought as he'd only be shocked. <laughs> so he sat there cleaning his musket and polishing barrel and butt, while the pudding Sam's mother had sent him lay there. Or was it there? No, it was there, in the mud by his foot. Now the centre that Sam's lot were holding ran around a place called Badajoz, where the Spaniards had put up a bastion. And oh, what a bastion it was. <laughs> they pounded away all the morning with canister, grape shot and ball, but the face of the bastion defied them. They made no impression at all. They started again after dinner, bombarding as hard as they could, and the Duke brought his own private cannon. But that went to eight of the good. Said Duke, Sam, lay down the musket and help me set this here gun true. Sam answered, you'd best ask your favours of them as you've give pudding to. <laughs> the Duke looked at Sam so reproachful, nay, don't take it that way, he says he. Us generals have got to be ruthless. It hurts me more than it hurts thee. Sam looked down the Duke's private cannon, pulled out the wadded and all, picked up and replaced the ball. He took a fair aim at the bastion, said, Rato Dukey, let fly. Well, the cannon near jumped off its trunnions, and up went the bastion sky high. The Duke, he weren't half elated, he'd ranced round the trench full of glee, and said, Sam, for this gallant action, you cannot up your pudding for tea. <laughs> Sam looked round to pick up his pudding. <laughs> Don't get ahead of me. <laughs> but it wasn't there, nowhere about. In the place that he thought he had left it was the cannonball he'd just tipped out. <laughs> he saw in a flash, well, early 19th century flash, he saw in a flash what had happened by an unprecedented mishap. The pudding 
Sam's mother had sent him had blown Badajoz off her map. <laughs> That's why Fusiliers wear to this moment a badge that they think's a grenade. But they're wrong. It's a brass reproduction of the pudding Sam's mother once made. Marius <laughs> Edgar.